Hi, my name is Ted Burmis, and I'd like to welcome you to this two-part series on coming up with a lightweight bikepacking rig. This video is not sponsored by anybody. All the stuff that I'm going to talk about, including the bicycle and the bags, everything I purchased with my own money, and um, if I'm using it, I recommend it. Over the last about six months, my friends and I were planning on a bikepacking trip. It was going to be an overnight stay about 40 miles away from home, possibly taking uh, public transportation with the bicycles, with tents and sleeping bags temperatures in the 50s to 60s at night about 30 30 degrees California kind of weather nothing too cold this is going to be a series of videos where I take you through my setup of my what I call my rig my bike packing rig which includes the bicycle all the bags all the stuff in the bags I was really frustrated that we didn't get a chance to go because of schedules and we got rained out twice and in that frustration, I said, well, it would be a shame for all the stuff that I've learned to not share with others. And also in the spirit of the internet where I've learned a lot of things from bicycle forums, the people helped me when I was asking questions. I wanted to help others who might be in the same situation. I have a bicycle that I, I like quite a bit. It's a 2007 Specialized Roubaix Comp Triple. It's one that I've had for quite a while. Uh, I do all the maintenance on it myself. I know how to work on it inside and out. I actually made my own wheels, which I will have a future video. If you subscribe, I'll let you know as soon as it comes out. I just love the way the bike rides. So when we were talking about this bike packing trip, this was right up my alley. I like bi bicycling and I like camping and it puts the two together. So right off the bat, I was wondering, all right, do I need to invest in a touring bicycle or can I use the current bicycle that I have that I know and love, I know how to work on? I did some research online and what I found is if you're gonna be carrying a lot of stuff, like 100 pounds of stuff, the touring bike is the way to go. It's just built for carrying extra stuff. However, if you're doing lightweight bike packing, like I am planning on doing, I found through my trial and error that the current bike that I have works perfectly for that application. Even though it doesn't have eyelets for panniers to carry a bunch of stuff, the fact that it's lightweight bike packing forces you to get rid of stuff that you might not necessarily need for ultimate comfort. Whereas if you have panniers that can hold a ton of stuff, if you have any doubt if you're going to bring something, at least I would take it this way. I would just throw it into the bag and say, all right, it's in there. The bike is not completely stock. I upgraded the brake pads. I went from the stock uh, Shimano pads to cool stop salmon pads. I'll put a link to them in the description. I actually have a mountain bike that has both V-brakes and I have another one that has disc brakes. Uh, disc brakes are great and they're kind of the, the in thing these days. I think they work great um, in wet and mountain biking, but if you're not carrying a lot of weight and you're primarily riding in dry, personally I think the the rim brakes, at least the higher end ones, are fantastic. I actually prefer them. I found online also, which was one of the inspirations for this video, that uh, wheels are one of the best ways to upgrade your current bicycle. And that is, it has to do with economics and marketing. It turns out that a lot of companies, they focus on the frame as they should when they're selling a bike. Um, but the next most expensive item tends to be the wheels and for whatever reason people don't focus on the wheels when they're buying a bike and I found that upgrading the wheels made a dramatic improvement in the handling and the enjoyment of the bike. And then finally a recent addition I did 
I went for a ride with a friend of mine who does a lot of triathlons and his bicycle, very nice one. He had a um, set of aero bars on the front and I asked him, hey, can I try it out? He said, sure. I went on it for a while and I really liked it. And not for the, the aero ability to go fast. This is another pro tip. I think I'm gonna give a lot of pro tips in this video, things that I've learned. What I found is that the aero bars allow you to have multiple additional hand positions. And I found for myself for longer trips that varying my hand and body positions on the bicycle helps alleviate aches and pains that I might have. If, I, if I'm only in the drops for a whole ride, my back and my neck are just gonna be killing me at the end of the ride. So having the ability to have my hands on the drops, on the tops, on the hoods, etc., helps me to alleviate those aches and pains. And the aero bars provide additional positions where you can do the aero position. But the one that I really like, and uh, I recommend this if you're thinking about uh, getting a shorter stem or raising your stem, the nice thing about the aero bars is because they have these um, armrests, I find that, and my friend told me about this when he was using it, it was one thing that he really liked. I put my hands on the armrests when I'm climbing sometimes, and it makes me really upright on the bike, and it's very comfortable. Uh, way more upright than shortening a stem ever would have gotten me, or even raising the stem. Now on to assembling the rig. And one of the major decision points was, was I going to use panniers or a frame bag? Or do I need both? So I had to do an inventory of everything I needed. And I, again, went online, asked people what they use, what they recommend. I found for this type of trip that I'm doing, 20 to 30 pounds of gear was uh, plenty. And 20 to 30 pounds is not a lot when you're talking about a bicycle, especially if you don't weigh a whole lot. I'm in the 150 to 160 pound range. So I knew I was gonna be in good shape with my bike not needing any modifications to handle the additional weight of carrying gear. So I built up this rig over several months. Again, uh, the major decision point was the panniers or not panniers. I tried the panniers um, with a product made specifically for bikes without eyelets. Uh, my bicycle was never meant for touring. So there are products on the market that allow you to use uh, specialized racks for these types of bikes. I purchased one. I tried putting it on my bike and I found that it just didn't fit right. It was extremely tight on the uh, seat collar. It looked like it was very well made, but I was just too nervous to force it onto my frame. I didn't think it was worth the risk of cracking or scratching the frame. It was that tight. So unfortunately, I didn't go that route. So very quickly, I went from panniers to frame bags. And since I knew that it was 20, 30 pounds, uh, I felt I could get everything I wanted if I could uh, distribute it amongst a frame bag a seat bag and any other additional bags onto the bicycle. As I said, I mentioned the frame bag. So I tried several and um, here's one thing I learned pretty quickly is that A, as you're adding weight to your bike, the more weight that you can add closer to the bottom bracket, the less effect it has on the handling of the bicycle. Again, let me say that the more weight you can put closer to the bottom bracket, the less effect it has on the handling of the bicycle. I was actually shocked with the frame bags that I tried. I actually went on a test ride where I put some power tools inside the frame bag. Uh, I was trying to put some heavy stuff to see how much it affected things. And the power tools, of course, dropped to the bottom of the frame bag. Uh, I'll show a picture of a couple of them that uh, I'm talking about. And I was very impressed at how little it affected the handling. Of course, it weighed down the bike a little bit, but uh, 
I felt the that turning, turning radius, all that stuff um, really was not affected at all. Now, because of that, um, I said, all right, the frame bag is very important. I want to maximize the volume of stuff I can put in the frame. So the frame bags that I tried that I got from Amazon, uh, unfortunately, because they're universal fit, um, they just didn't fill out the main triangle of my bicycle. So I went online, did a search, and I found uh, several companies that make really good products. Um, this one that I discovered, Apidura, which I highly recommend, not cheap stuff, very, uh, it's actually quite expensive, but very, very well made. What sold me was they had some templates on their site for the different frame bags, and you could print them out on your printer, um, cut and paste them together to make your mock frame bag and put it on your bike and make sure that it fits. And sure enough, I found one that worked. And I'll show it to you right now. Here's the frame bag, Apidura. It's, uh, this is actually the smallest of their Expedition series. It's a waterproof bag. Again, extremely well made. The pockets, the zippers, the Velcro, Velcro straps, the design of where the straps can move. Everything about it is just quality. Uh, I highly recommend it. It also has this cool port here. If you were to put a water bladder in here, you could have your hose go out here. I'll talk about that in a, in a minute as well. So now I had the frame bag. As I did some test rides with this, loading it up with some gear, it took up the space that I normally had for my water bottles. And I didn't realize how much I rely on being able to just reach down and grab a water bottle. And while the frame bag could hold water bottles, I found it was too much of a hassle to unzip it. It was actually difficult to unzip with one hand, grab the water bottle, drink it, stick it back in, rezip it. It became very clear very quickly that I needed one-handed access to water while I'm riding. Be able to grab it, drink it, put it back while I'm riding, just like having a um, water bottle cage on the bicycle. So I tried several different methods. Um, one of them that um, goes in line with what I said about putting weight in the lower bottom bracket is uh, using like a camelback bladder. I found I could put a huge amount of water inside the, in the frame bag. And it was great because it, if I put it towards the bottom, it didn't affect the handling. However, I just didn't like having to uh, pop my head down, drink out of the hose and pop my head back up. I still was used to using water bottles. So I actually didn't go that route, even though I did try it. Another thing that I tried was attaching water bottles to the top tube of the bicycle. That was actually promising, but it had some drawbacks as well. I had less standover clearance, basically. So another thing I tried was putting the water bottles on either side of the fork. And I learned the hard way that uh, if you make it such that you can easily reach down and grab it, which is not that hard, even if it's on the fork, if you're going on a bumpy ride, the water bottles can eject. And that actually happened to me as I was going down a fast descent and started hitting some, um, some bumpy sections of the road. The water bottles just ejected. And that pretty clearly showed me, A, I have to attach them um, more securely to the point where it was gonna be hard to get them out. I was frustrated by that, but then I tried putting the water bottle on top of the stem. And I don't quite understand why, but it's a lot more secure up there than down by the wheels. I guess a lot of the, the road um, chatter, the buzz, the, the disturbances go straight through the wheel so the fork gets the brunt of it. For whatever reason, the, the stem doesn't seem to get that much. And um, also because of the way I oriented the cage, um, gravity was holding the, um, 
the water bottle down as opposed to trying to pull it off if I had it on the forks. I'd also like to talk about water bottles for a minute. For me, the Camelback Podium Series are great. They're very easy to clean. The whole valve assembly completely comes apart, which is great for hygiene and keeping it clean. Also, a, a really nice feature is it has a lock on top, which is great, especially since now for my bikepacking rig, I have the water bottle on top of the stem. I found if I hit bumps, even though the water bottle is secure, it's not falling off, I found if I don't lock it, the water can spurt out a little bit onto the front tire. And I have rim brakes, remember, so that's not a great uh, combination, water and rim brakes, or even if it went onto a, a disc brake bike. So a pro tip, if you put your water bottle on top of your stem, make sure it has the ability to lock it, to lock the valve, and make sure you lock the valve before you go downhill. That tends to be when um, a lot of these types of uh, road chatter um, can happen and it's the most dangerous time for water to go onto your brake system. I also ruled out putting the water bottle behind the seat because that is one area where you can put quite a bit of stuff. Um, here's another pro tip that I learned is you can fit quite a bit of stuff behind your bicycle seat with a seat bag, one of the, the newer styled seat bags. If you like this video, please go ahead and hit that like button. Hit subscribe and I'll let you know as soon as I have updated videos on different items uh, that I like to use. I'll also, as soon as I go on my bikepacking trip, I'm gonna have a lot of videos about that trip and show you what I learned on this bikepacking expedition. Thank you.